Hey everyone, welcome to this week's episode. Today we are going to do a roundup episode of all the catamarans that we have reviewed so far in 2019. We are going to score them from the worst performer to the best performer based on your scores. So for those of you who don't already know, we are looking at cruising catamarans between 40 and 50 foot with a view to hopefully buying one for ourselves one day. So this episode is going to be a summary and we are going to use your scores that you have submitted via our app throughout the series so far. The only time we are going to weigh in is if there is a tie. So let's kick things off by seeing which boat scored the lowest. So let's start this rundown video off with the lowest placed boat. Unfortunately, someone had to be last and this dubious honor falls to the Neil 47. Once your scores had all been counted, the average vote for the Nil 47 was 22 out of 50. So the positives for the Nil 47, the helm position was fantastic. It has a lovely central nav station and it's light and fast. We were also very impressed with the position of the life raft. That's good access in case of emergency. As for the downsides to this boat, well, build quality is number one, two, and three. It was hull number one. However, there was still a lot of errors and problems with this boat, mastic in places that shouldn't be, broken surfaces, altogether not a good finish for a boat that costs half a million euros. And of course, if you want to see the full review of the Neil 47, the link is here. So 22 out of 50 for the Neil 47. Let's hope that subsequent models have a better finish. Coming in at place number eight is the Fontaine Pajot Estrella 42. Now you voted this 27 out of 50. Our scores were slightly more modest. We voted it 26 out of 50. So what do we like about the Fontaine Pajot 42? Well, firstly, the helm position is fantastic. It's a really comfortable helm and long passages would be a breeze from here. The accommodation is well thought out. It is aesthetically very pleasing. The berths are large and inviting. Altogether, this would be a fantastic boat for a charter or a sunny holiday. We were also really impressed with the cockpit. This boat has one of the best cockpits in class. It is inviting and a lovely place to spend time. As for the downsides, well, I have some real questions over the tie rod system of the steering mechanism. This to me needs to be far sturdier. Regarding the interior, we found some of the wood veneers to be fairly thin and flimsy, and we would wonder how the interior would fare after many years of use. We similarly had questions about the position of the life raft, whether this was just there for the show or otherwise the access was poor. So thank you once again to everyone who has voted for this boat. We now have over a thousand review scores and the average for the Estrella, 27 out of 50. Now in at seventh place is the Leopard 45. This boat really split the pack and it is the first of our tie break boats. Now Leopard, as you may know, are super popular in the charter market. Our scores from the full review are on the bottom of the screen now. We scored this 29, whereas the popular vote was 31. What do we like about it? It has some really lovely living space. It has a good forward chart table and the positives, that forward cockpit. If you like the forward cockpit, you really like the forward cockpit. The berths are large and well ventilated. This is a nice place to sleep. And similarly, we were really happy with the safety features. Lots of grab rails all around the boat. We found the joinery and the finish to be above average in quality. And if the light wood finish is your cup of tea, then this is a really lovely living space. As for the downsides, well, the easiest thing to deal with is the performance. This boat does not perform well. The more difficult issue here is that the downsides of this boat are the upsides. If you like the forward cockpit, you really love it. If you want to go on long ocean passages, is the forward cockpit going to be fantastic for you? Will it drain as effectively as they say it will? Well, it's sturdy enough, but it's not something we would possibly want. Similarly, the interior design is not everyone's cup of tea. You scored the boat 31 out of 50. We only awarded it 29, but this is an interesting boat and I think it warrants going to look at it again. Coming in sixth place is the Lagoon 42, a favorite for the Ark. This boat, you scored it 31, so it's a tie with the Leopard 45. So what do we like so much about the Lagoon 42? Well, let's start with the helm position. The helm of the Lagoon 42 is fantastic. It has an optional but really sturdy bimini. It has a fantastic glass panel. Visibility is superb. You can see the sails and you would feel really secure here on passage. 
The life raft position is also excellent. This is a really sturdy boat. The steering mechanism, the engine bay, it's all really well thought out and well engineered. The new Lagoon Range also come with this really tasteful walnut interior, which to me is a massive improvement over the previous light wood interior. However, this interior design is not everyone's cup of tea. So as a negative, it doesn't suit everybody. Also, because of those really wide hulls, there is no real performance here compared to other boats that we have reviewed. The exterior looks are similarly not everyone's taste, but you get a good value for money boat here. So we awarded it a 30, you scored it a 31, tied again with the Leopard 45. Now coming in at fifth place, the Katana 53. We were really surprised that this boat scored so low. You scored it 31 on average. We scored it 39, but we're going with your votes, not ours to remove any potential bias. So the Katana 53, supremely impressive and our scores are at the bottom of the screen now. As a plus, the performance of this boat is fantastic. It has dagger boards, it is light and it is fast. It is well constructed and the quality of the finish are superb. A forward facing nav station for those long passages and the bespoke finish means that Katana will entertain any whim that you have regarding the interior finish and fit from wood choices to leather choices to the galley work surfaces. Similarly, the accommodation in the hulls is well thought out spacious and airy we found this to be a really well built boat as for the downsides of the katana 53 well that helm station you just did not like the fact that the helm station was so outboard your comments on the full review which i will link to here showed that you did not believe that this would be a good place to be on long passages you felt it was far too exposed you also wanted to see more overhead opening hatches in the hulls and you felt that for 1.3 million US dollars, the finish could be better. So you awarded this 31 out of 50. It is only our score of 39 that brought it up to fifth place. And coming in, in fourth place, just outside of the top three, the Naughty Tech 46. You awarded this a 32. We awarded it 33. So you scored it down a little bit, but a fantastic boat and well done to Naughty Tech Bavaria, new on the market to Catamaran Manufacture. So what do we like about this boat? Well, it's light and it's fast and the performance data says that it's gonna perform faster than your average catamaran. It is well constructed. We found the build quality to be way above average for a production cat. Fittings were sturdy and well built. We had no issues with these. Similarly, the construction of the interior joinery was in excess of what we would expect from a boat at this price point. Overall, we felt that the finish of this boat was the best for any production catamaran. The woodwork and joinery was superb. The seating area, the cockpit, and every aspect of this were well put together. The interior accommodation was light, airy, and well thought out. It was a really inviting space. So we were very, very pleased with this Naughty Tech. It would be a serious consideration for a long passage maker for us. The downsides to this boat, well, the open version does have exposed helms. We felt, as did you, that these exposed helms would not be fantastic on long passages. You can get cockpit enclosures for the Naughty Techs, However, for long ocean passages, we would prefer a more central and better protected cockpit. You also marked it down on this, and so the score for the Nautitech 46, 32 out of 50. Now into the top three in third place, the Privilege Series 5 now rebranded, the Privilege 510. You scored this 35 points, so a significant jump from place number four. There was so much to love about this boat. We scored it 35. The interior was absolutely fantastic. It is hard to find a better built interior. The joinery, the fittings, the materials, all absolutely top notch. Privilege really do use the best of the best for everything in these boats. They are super luxurious from the amazing cabin spaces to the quality of the joinery and the finish in galleys, bedrooms, and saloons the master cabin is absolutely stunning literally lost for words just take a moment to drink all this in with your eyes what else can i say wow 
Add to this one of the best helm stations we've ever seen. It has a hard dodger. It is secure and safe. You have a very, very secure place to navigate from here. This is one fantastic boat. So what about the negatives? Well, this is a heavy boat and the performance is really going to suffer here. You are not going to get startling or sparkling speeds. In addition to that, oh, the price. We are looking at almost $2 million for this boat and you are paying for European labor rates. So it is not the best value for money. So we knocked it down for that. You, however, still think it is a fantastic boat. So a good 35 out of 50. Well done, Privilege. <laughs> Moving on to second place, and this is taken by the Uchimer 51. Now, this is interesting. We scored it a 40. You said I was biased. I probably am, and so knocked it down to 37. So what is there to say about the Uchimer 51 that hasn't already been said? The interior is absolutely fantastic. The quality of the finish, the fittings, the cabinetry, it is all superb. This is one very, very well-made boat. It is beautiful inside. It it is well engineered. It takes about six times longer to build one of these boats than the average production catamaran. This really is a boat that for me, dreams are made of. In addition to this, the lightweight construction, the carbon fiber, the Kevlar, and the performance rig mean that you get a really, really fast and comfortable cruiser. You are looking at 23 knots of boat speed in 25 knots of wind. That is absolutely phenomenal. But what about negatives for the Uchimer 51? There's a couple of sticking points. Firstly, this engine access, you are right on the back of those sugar scoops to get to the engine access. That is a little bit dangerous in a big sea. Uh, we didn't like that and you didn't like it either. In addition to that, those helm stations, whether it's the bucket seats or the helm seat, you are exposed and it is not going to be comfortable on long passages. Uchimer do state that you can get an enclosure for the helm. However, we would want something more protected than this for long ocean going passages. One final and very small point. The galley is small and that cooker next to the stairs. I don't want that there. So you thought the same 37 out of 50. It lost a few points, unfortunately. And in first place, the Sea Wind 1600. This is so well deserved. We scored it 42, you scored it 38. So it pipped the Uchimer to the gold position. Fantastic, well done, Sea Wind. So what is it to say about the 1600 that we loved so much? Let's start with this helm. The helm is well protected, but yet still gives you full visibility fore and aft. It is comfortable and a place that we would be happy to spend long watches on. Similarly, the cockpit is well adjusted. It is a fantastic place for both socializing and for watch keeping. Full 360 visibility. Helm stations, absolutely fantastic. Throttle controls on both sides. It is a luxurious, but yet practical space and very very safe the interior minimalist but luxurious a forward facing nav station that gives you full 360 visibility of the entire boat it also gives you a full ability to look at the trim of your sails and this would be a fantastic position as a secondary helm for those long night watches again we are assessing here suitability for the perfect long distance cruising catamaran in addition to this, the performance is sparkling. You are looking at projected speeds of over 23 knots off the wind. This boat is really going to fly. Negatives, well, we're splitting hairs here, but let's talk about a few things. Because of the narrow hull shape, you are getting slightly smaller than average cabins. You are not gonna get the space that you're gonna get in a big old production cruiser there. In addition to this, the interior finish, it's not quite as good as the Privilege or the Outremer, but all things being equal, you are looking at a very, very well-appointed, luxurious, long-distance, blue-water passage-making catamaran. You felt so as well and awarded this a top score of 38. Congratulations, Sea Wind 1600. Thank you so much for watching this week's episode. I hope you'll agree that that Sea Wind 1600 is a worthy contender for the first place position. However, of course, we have not finished our catamaran review series. We still have many other catamarans to go, such as the Antares, the Neisner, the Majestic, the Maverick, and many, many more. So 
that means only one thing it is now boat show season we are going to go out and review all of these catamarans and see whether the 1600 is not off its first place position i for one am very interested to see what we find if you haven't already subscribed to our channel then now is a great chance to do so just click that subscribe button and the notification bell so you know when we release a new episode while you're at it we'd greatly appreciate a thumbs up and a comment in the comment section below in the meantime we'll see you next week for a brand new episode thanks so much